So have you ever considered how much your message matters? Welcome to Tools to Manifest Your Dream Life with myself, Glenice Hughes. And today I have a very, very special guest. Hello, Angela, and welcome. Hi, everyone. I'm really happy to be here. Thank you, Glenice. Angela has been an amazing friend and mentor, marketing mentor, business mentor for years and years. I don't even want to think about how many years it's been, uh, but I want to give a little bit of a bio and I am going to read it because if I was just going to talk off the cuff, I would just talk about how amazing and awesome Angela is. So let me just read this. So Angela is a trauma-informed messaging and marketing strategist with 20 years of experience helping service-based business owners make an impact without sacrificing their profits, purpose, or joy. Yes, I love it. I love it. Now, Angela, maybe you can share with everybody what trauma-informed messaging and marketing means. Yeah. So breaking that down, trauma-informed, there are a lot of definitions out there. So thank you for asking. But trauma-informed is a lens through which you see and how you work with people. And so you understand the impacts of trauma on human beings, how their lived experiences shape their decisions, the way they operate in the world, the way they react, the way they build relationships, all the things. And so you approach a client through that trauma-informed lens with curiosity, compassion, and a deep understanding of what's happening with their brain and nervous system as a result of that trauma and lived experiences. And the other thing that I'll add here is trauma is not just catastrophic experiences. And so that's the other big misconception is people think, oh, it's just if you went to war or if you were assaulted or you lived through a natural disaster. But trauma can be the things that didn't happen that should have happened. For example, someone keeping you safe, making sure that there was food in the house as a child. Food insecurity could be a traumatic experience for people. The last thing I'll say is that not every negative experience results in trauma in the nervous system and body. And so it's really, it's about if you've had an experience where it's just too much for your body to process, then that gets stored in your body as trauma. So in a nutshell, I could talk for hours about that, but in a nutshell, that's what that is. <laughs> yes. Yes. I, it's such, honestly, I mean, and I've been in business over 20 years at this point, and it's only really been in the past couple of years that I've been more aware of this and still not to the degree that. I could be, which is one of the reasons I'm enjoying talking to you today, but also just us working together uh, over the past few days where you've helped me look at some things with my marketing and really looking at, and, and I actually think it was a reel that you made and you were talking in there about like, how can it be a win-win? Or maybe it was an email that you sent. And guys, if you're not on Angela's email list, get on there. She sends <laughs> some amazing emails with tips and tricks. So all of that will be in the show notes or in the links above or below. If you don't, if you can't find them, just reach out. I will get them for you. But you were talking in there about how, like a, doing it from a win-win, like instead of saying I've only got five spots and you could have a hundred, how could that be a win-win or how could you rephrase that? And it's things Honestly, I just saw people doing this type of business. So I did what they did without yeah. looking at the impact. Yeah. And I think that's really the important piece is when we make decisions, whether it's our interpersonal conversations and the words we're using there, um, our if people who are business owners, if you're listening, the words that we're using to market our businesses, there is this false urgency that we manufacture. We've been taught to manufacture of like, oh, hurry and get your spot or like whatever it is. And here's the the catch 22 is because humans don't usually choose easy. We have to have a little pressure sometimes to make choices. And so we're working with human nature. And so it's honoring that, but it's about where are we manipulating folks to do what we want them to do rather than creating an environment where people have empowered choice. And so that's an example of trauma informed of just understanding if I say this and I say it this way, and I treat people this way in my sales process, my marketing process, then what am I trying to get from them? And that's not a win-win. If we're approaching any relationship with what am I trying to extract from that person rather than what can we co-create together? What value can I offer that's a match for what they're looking for? And if it's not, then trusting that my ideal client is somewhere out there and it's just not this person, but I don't have to force this relationship to happen so I can make money. Like that's, I again, it could go on and on, but it's just, it's having that awareness of what is the impact of my words? 
Yeah. What impact do I want to have? How do I want people to feel when they interact with me? Those are some of the questions to be really considering. I love that. I love that. I recently created a, an opt-in page for people who want to be part of an email uh, campaign type of thing. And I had shared it with a, a friend that you and I both work with and her name is Carrie. And I just said, Hey, do you mind just taking a quick look? And I had basically used, I've used a template from a thing that I had purchased. And so she just had, you could use all of her words and all of that. So I just went in, copy pasted and changed a couple of things that were more uh, accurate to the, what I was talking about. But one of the things that Carrie came back to me with, and she's like, you know, because at, at the very bottom, right before a person would opt in, it said to avoid FOMO, to avoid fear of missing out, get on the list now or something. <laughs> and I was just horrified when, when Carrie pointed it out, because I didn't even, I didn't even recognize what that was. Can you speak more to that? Yeah. Yeah. And Carrie, she uh, actually participated in my rooted program, which is trauma informed basics for business owners. So I love that she caught that. And so it's about just being transparent and honest. And sometimes there are honest limitations. So I'm running a class this week. I have a coupon code and it does expire by like tomorrow or whatever day of the week this is, (laughs) like sometime in the next 48 hours, it does expire. And not because I'm trying to create this false urgency, but there are very strategic reasons that one honors my energetic capacity, like what I have the bandwidth for, it gets people in. And when I have, it's almost like this universe giving me this green light of, Hey, people are excited about this. And so when I have some of that momentum and I see that, then my energy can respond and I show up in a very different way than if I'm trying to pull people into my offers. Right. And so when we use FOMO and there are legitimate reasons why we want to put limitations or timeframes on it, Great. Of course, do that because we cannot be offering all the things all the time at all the price points to everybody. That is not kind to ourselves. And so part of being trauma-informed and part of really seeing the impact that our words have is also how does it impact us? So we have to be included. It's not just how other people are being treated. But yeah, FOMO is a really interesting thing. I think it's It can be tricky because there is so much FOMO. We want to be in the in crowd. And when we, I'll geek out from a brain perspective for a minute, our brains are wired for connection. We want to belong somewhere. And so when there is any indication that we belong or we're in the quote in crowd, or we are doing the right thing the right way, then there is a reward system in our brain, nervous system and body that's, yeah, this feels good. I'm like, I'm part of something. But when we use FOMO as a way to create this us versus them or good versus bad or, or really, and people don't necessarily say this, but this is kind of the energy behind it. If you don't do this, you're a loser. If you don't do this, then, and I hate that language. It's, oh, it doesn't feel great. But if you don't do this, then there's something wrong with you. You're flawed, you're broken. Oh, but wait, I have the perfect formula to fix you. So when we really look at what is the energy behind the words and then what are the words being shared and how are those words being shared and what formats, knowing that humans, again, we sometimes take that nudge or big nudge to make a decision. So it's like, how do we honor human nature without manipulating people? And sometimes it's a fine line. Yeah, it, it totally. And even when you say, oh, I hate those words, well, you're going to be a loser if you don't join. If it was that clear, <laughs> I would have never done it. But it's not that clear. It's very, yes, it's, it sneaks in. And it's, oh, if you just say it this way, and then people will be motivated. And, and it's like, will they be motivated or will they be manipulated? There is a difference. And is it because I want them to do something or it truly serves that person and they are empowered to make a choice? Yes. You know, and that's where we really want to look at. And what I love about this too, is that we look at any systems that this is not just sales and marketing. We look at politics. We look at education. We look at healthcare. We look at interpersonal relationships. We look at family dynamics, social work. We look at all of these dynamics And there is so much manipulation of, I want this person to behave X, Y, Z. And so I will create this environment that will get them to do that thing, whether it's a vote a certain way, (laughs) purchase a certain thing, drive that car, whatever, cut their hair a certain way. 
like whatever it is. And so it's like when we can just pay attention to, oh, I didn't recognize that I was participating in this kind of dynamic of how people are being treated. Huh. And the other thing I love about this too is when you're paying attention to those words being used at you or toward you, sometimes against you, then you can also be paying attention to your own buying habits. Like, how does this feel in my body when I interact with this person's marketing or when I go to this certain establishment in my community? Am I feeling honored and seen? Is my choice being honored? Healthcare is a really great way to start looking at this. Am I actually allowed to advocate for myself? Or is this doctor just, oh, no, this is your problem, but they're not even listening to you. <laughs> so we can go on and on and I can go on many tangents, but this is why it matters is yeah. not only how we're using those words in toward the people around us, but how are we receiving those words? And it makes so much sense because like you say, if you're as, as a consumer, if you're on some sort of social media platform or somebody's webpage and you're feeling manipulated or that you're going to miss out if you don't jump in right now or all of those things, it's yeah, like that does feel crappy. And, and how many times I've made cho purchasing choices based on that, especially the fear of, of missing out or here's the deal. And if you don't buy in 19 minutes, the deal is gone forever. <laughs> and you see that countdown timer and you're like, ah, the pressure. <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah, it's so, it's such an interesting way to look at it. And then as a business owner, when you talk about your like actual honest limitations, I love that. I love that we're included too, because my, my response initially was like, Oh my gosh, I got to do everything and, and make sure it's always honoring of them. And it's like, mm -hmm. no, I, it, and I'm thinking of one offer I have right now. And there, there is literally five spots because it's an intensive coaching mm -hmm. and I cannot do more than five at a time. So it says right on there, there are five spots. It's not because I have room for 50 because mm -hmm. I actually don't, but I have in the past used a number or some sort of a limitation that was not honest. It was a false scarcity to, to manipulate that. I just, I didn't know. I didn't I mean, know. I, I didn't either. <laughs> like I look back at some of the marketing, like it was a few years ago, I was cleaning up an old hard drive and I found this video from one of my events. I used to run three day events and it was so cringy. Like it was just, I was listening to the words I was saying and going, oh, <laughs> like it just, and I remember, I don't remember where I heard this, but it's, if you're not embarrassed of the first versions of whatever you put out in the world and you're not putting enough out in the world, I'm like, okay, check, very embarrassed <laughs> <laughs> because, ugh. but it wasn't this overt manipulation. But what I recall when I was watching this video of myself, because I went right, like right back standing on that stage. And I remember that pit in my stomach and what the coaches that I was working with told me, that's your fear. You're just practicing something new, which, okay, I can see that. But here, now that I have language for what was happening, it was like my intuition and my body was like, there's another way to do this, but I didn't know how to do it because I didn't see it modeled. And so if we use what we have, where we are, when we know better, we do better. But yeah, there are some cringy things I've done in the past. <laughs> yeah. And which is probably why I'm so like hell bent. I'm like, we could do it differently, everybody. It's okay, we can do it differently. Yeah. And everyone will get what they need. Like we do not have to push and rush and force things. Like, does everyone take a breath? <laughs> Yeah. And so what if there is an easy way to explain this? If I do have a timer countdown on something, how could I do that? That would be actually a way that honors both the other person and myself. Yeah. So the only time I really use countdown timers in this particular example is the start date to an event. This is happening on this day. And this is when the live call is happening. So you can do something like that. But if there is this limitation of you only have 19 minutes to make your choice, guess what? When you refresh the page, the timer starts over. <laughs> like people will see through the bullshit. And so I, but I like things like that. And when we think about it is as an honoring or a gentle reminder of when things happen. And so sometimes people, you know, think, well, I can't send reminder emails when cart closes or before a program starts. I have to just be really gentle. It's, no, we're not here to coddle people or only send one email and expect people to remember that we exist. 
But when we think about like reminder emails or countdowns or things like that, it's, oh, this is a reminder to let people know that this is happening and they can choose it or not. Because I think when our energy is about desperation and oh, I have to get this, I have to get, again, it's getting something from someone rather than here's this thing. I fully believe in it. And I trust whether we use language, like I trust the universe to deliver the people because they keep showing up. Like I trust this process. I trust that I can keep showing up. I trust that what I'm sharing has value. And I trust that the people who are looking for this will choose it. When that's the energy, it is a, a growth mindset or an abundance mindset rather than a scarcity mindset, then I think that will help shift things too. And then really just asking the question of why am I doing this? Why is why why do I think this is a strategy to reach my goal? Is it because I've been conditioned to believe that I should do that? Hmm. What if I just got curious about, I wonder if there's another way, or I wonder if there's a way that I can use this strategy ish, <laughs> but make it my own, make it. So it actually feels really good. Yeah. It's not throwing all this out. It's just, how do we adapt things to honor ourselves and others? I love that. And so do you have some tips for people who maybe aren't really sure what their capacity is? You talked about, you did have a, you have a coupon, but it, it ends because of your own capacity with yeah. delivering. So how could somebody who's maybe hearing this stuff for the first time and they want to look at themselves and what's available? For me, it was clear with those five. I know I can't do more than five at a time, but do you have any tips for people to get clear yeah. for that? Yeah, I think really having an a honest conversation of what is your energetic capacity? What's your bandwidth? And I really love spacious marketing plans. And I'm not great at spacious marketing plans because I get ideas at the last minute and I get very excited. This is my ADHD brain. And I'm like, okay, let's crush it. I can do this in 24 hours. And then <laughs> like hour 20, I'm like, Oh Lordy, what was I thinking? Like I, I had this moment of I could do all the things and now I'm really tired. And so knowing that my energy ebbs and flows, like that's one thing that I'm always looking at is one, how do I give myself more space? So instead of a week to market something, what would 30 days look like? And then if it's 30 days and if my energy starts dipping, because it's like, I don't know if I can just keep quote pushing and keep marketing something for 30 days. Okay. Then what could that look like? Could it be one email a week and one post on Instagram a week? What do, what honors my capacity? So I think that is the, the number one tip I would share is start with where you are, with what you have access to and honor that. Because if it's, you know, I call this a cash injection marketing. It's just this constant cash. Like I need cash. I need cash. And I get it. Been there. Sometimes still there. It's like, oh, I need a cash injection this month. Like whatever the, the situation is, like this is just part of business, but it's not the only way to run a business. Like if that's the only thing that's driving marketing and sales, let's look at this from the nervous system standpoint of your nervous system is on all the time. It's not sustainable. And so you might not notice differences in your business at first, but you might notice that you're getting really irritable with your partner. Or by the time the weekend comes around, you're like, oh, I just don't really want to do anything. I can just Netflix, like that's it. <laughs> okay, so that's a clue. And not, I mean, sometimes it's just, I'm going to have a Netflix day, <laughs> right? So I'm not shaming that at all. However, if you are running out of energy because your business is taking over your life, because it's constant hustle, constant pushing, then that might be something to look at of how can we add more spaciousness and more intentionality to what you're creating and work ahead of the game instead of always responding or and always reacting. Yeah. yeah, starting with your capacity, but you really, what do you truly have the energy for? Yeah, yeah. And I think too, what's fun because as soon as it's not fun anymore, it just changes. Like it just, mm -hmm. and, and we probably all can recognize that. Cause if we're, if you're in business and you, there is a joy to it often, there is a lightness to it often. It's just when that changes, <laughs> what's yeah. occurred, what's happening, what have you said yes to that maybe was too much or like Angela and I are very alike in that we have this great idea and we want to get it out, you know, tomorrow. And it's 
not kind. And it's not just not kind to us. It's not kind to you guys that we're sending it out to. Right. It's like, well, I've been thinking about this for a whole week, y'all. Why can't you just make a quick decision? <laughs> you know, and it's like, <laughs> I always use the, the phrase of no one's thinking about your business 24 <laughs> seven, like you are <laughs> like, they might really adore you, but they don't love you that much. <laughs> and so you've <laughs> got to give your offers, your work in the world, a chance to actually grow in the world. Offer it more than once, send more than one email, give people a chance to really receive your work. It's not going to happen from a one hit wonder or one email or one post, but we would like it to be, <laughs> you know, be like, why hasn't this gone viral? This is brilliant. <laughs> That's so true. Because the algorithm is just what it's going to do what it's going to do, you yeah. know? And so it's that slow and steady, keep showing up and yes, follow the joy. And then there are some moments and I know this, and I think this is really a uh, minor divergence of like, oh, I'm bored. Okay. So instead of using my business as a way to entertain myself, where else can I get dopamine? <laughs> I don't not need to keep recreating stuff just because I'm bored. Go paint, go outside, plant a flower, something else. <laughs> Anything else. Yes. <laughs> Oh, that's so true. Okay. So we're, we're talking about how your message matters. And so what I'd, I'd like around that in terms of like, from your perspective with messaging is like how, I don't really know how to phrase this, but what, it, what is a way that a person can have their message in the world in a way that is, again, honoring of them, honoring of other people? Now that might be a really too vague of a question, but you know, here's where my mind went. And I'm not sure if this is where you're going. So tell me if I'm totally off track here, because we're talking a lot about business, but this is about life. You know, so my partner, he is not an entrepreneur. There is not one entrepreneur bone in his entire body. <laughs> like he's no, I'm very happy with my nine to five. Thank you. I'm great. But he recently got a promotion and he's done some really amazing things with this team that he manages. And I asked him one day and I said, what do you think this is about? Why are people responding to you this way? And he said, I really believe that people matter. And I was like, huh. And the reason I'm sharing this is because I have a very similar value. And I was like, well, that's one of the reasons why we mesh so well. But it was also a very clear intention that we created for our home. And we want when people come to our home and our space, we want them to know that they're safe, they're loved, they're seen and that they're valued and that they matter. And so that's just been this energy that we have created our gatherings and family parties and birthday parties of, we very are very intentional about that. And then this also became the tagline for a card business that we created of reminding people they matter. And so now that you have to turn <laughs> this thing that you're passionate about, just the way you be in the world into a business, you'd have to monetize everything. But I think that's an example of the way that you just are in the world, that matters. The way we're talking to each other matters. The way we're talking to each other online matters. This is, I think, a really pivotal time in our world that there are a lot of people who very seriously question if they have value because of all the comparison and all the bullshit out there. And so when we can be that one voice of like, I see you, I see you working your ass off. I see you overcoming things that you didn't think you could overcome. Like that's the difference it makes. You just, you never know that one person who just needed to be seen that day. So that's under, like all the marketing and all the things it's, that's the foundation. That's what really lights me up about this work. Yeah. Yeah. When you come from that value, then it's, I'm going to say it's very easy to honor the other people and yourself in that because it's not just they matter it's we matter yes oh I love that yeah. and so in in the work that you do because there's many things that you offer and it's all around messaging in some form or another you talk a lot about messaging before marketing mm -hmm. so why is that why do people need to get their messaging kind of figured out or whatever the term is before yeah. the marketing starts yeah, because it's really hard to market something if you don't know what you're marketing. <laughs> if you don't know, and this, and it seems really obvious, and I've had people argue, no, you just start marketing. And, but for my, the way I 
operate. And this could just be my unique brain. Of, but what am I saying to people? How like this just doesn't even make sense in my brain. So I had the message and it's the marketing comes very closely. There's even an overlap. It's like where one goes, the other follows. They're not these two separate entities. It's they are very interwoven. But that message of what do you stand for? How do you help people? What, what are the values you're rooted in? That informs and fuels all of your marketing. And marketing is, okay, you've got the words. Now, how do you share those words? Whether it's social media or email or speaking or podcast or whatever the thing is. But it really helps the marketing be authentic, be very clear. And you're very clear about who you're attracting. Who do you want to be working with? Who is that dream client? And if you're like, oh, I can help everyone. No, you can't. You actually cannot. <laughs> you would like to, maybe people could benefit, but they don't always want what you have. <laughs> and so <laughs> you can't actually help everybody. And so that's the biggest piece It's just, it provides the clarity and the direction of your marketing. Yeah. And the other piece I would say is, again, as a years into business myself is it also, once you have the messaging and not that I'm perfect at that by any means, but once once you have the the messaging, it's so easy to be consistent throughout the platforms and throughout your emails and your posts and your your offers. I, I recently took a, a print on demand course from a woman and now she's sending me emails about something totally unrelated. And then and it's just like, uh, what? No, yeah. <laughs> again, I know I've done this. Believe me, I know I've done this, but it's so clear to see that now. And she's not wrong. It's just, you know, I when you talk about messaging before marketing, it's Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> yes, please. Yeah. And you can be what I call multi-passionate or multifaceted entrepreneur. Like I do not just do one offer. I have my side gigs. I am an artist. I do other things. Um, but I try to find that common thread that weaves through everything, which really comes back to the, like you matter piece. So that's the story that I'm always passionate about sharing. And so this does not mean you have to pick one thing, stay in your lane, only do that one thing. If you're like me, you're like, I'm already dying of boredom. I can't do that. <laughs> you know. And also giving yourself permission that you will evolve. You will shift and change. And the catch 22 about having your message solid first is it can be a really convenient way to avoid rejection. And so it's, oh, I have to get this perfect. I have to get the words perfect. I have to nope, this is it. And then we test the waters. We send one email or one post. Oh, we didn't get the response we wanted. Oh, that's the message is wrong. No, people are busy. They're not paying attention to you. So you have to show up more than once to really see what's landing with people. You will evolve. You'll see what really lands with your audience and you'll make adjustments as you go. So it's a living, your message is a living, breathing thing. It's never going to stay the same. And so don't expect it to. Yeah. And I don't think we want it to. And maybe some people, I, I shouldn't say that. People like you and I probably don't want to. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 I, I mean, I, there are certain things that I could talk about for a long time. And, and then when I'm done, I'm done. I'm like, I, nope, I can't. Like I'll turn this into an ebook or some sort of course or something that people can do, but I'm ready for the next of, you know, evolution, the next thing that I'm interested in. Yeah. Typical Absolutely. ADHD maybe, but <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, so I have one more question for you, but first I want to talk about Word. And so this is a, a program that you have coming up starting August 12th, I believe. Am 15th. I yep. 15, August 15th. Yeah. Uh, and so for everybody listening, I am an affiliate, so you will see the link above or below. And this is an invitation into this course, into Angela's world. And of course, there's many ways in, even getting on her email list will bring you lots of insights and tips and such for how she bees in the world, especially mm -hmm. in the business world with such. But if you could speak about word for us. Yeah. So Word is one of my signature programs. Um, it's one of those things that I have not gotten sick of talking about <laughs> in almost 10 years. And um, and it's about crafting your core marketing message for your business, your offers, uh, your messaging for your offers. Um, but we go deeper than that. We go into really a lot of the mindset work about being visible, because that's what really trips up a lot of people. It's like you can have the words, but if there's some visibility blocks or some hesitations around that, then it's really hard to share that message. And so it's the best of both both worlds. It's workshopping your message and getting live feedback in a safe environment so that you have those words. Also working on that, what I call that embodied confidence. Like when you can show up in the world and go, 
yeah, this is what I'm about. And I trust that the right people are going to see this and say yes to it. That's a very different energy than trying to be all the things to all the people because you don't know really what you stand for or who you are. And so it's a combination of that mindset, the deeper work, and also just let's get the words out of you <laughs> and onto a piece of paper so that you can start sharing them. So it's a combination of live training as well as mini modules. So it really deepens the learning and you can access things in a year when you want to refresh your message or things like that. So it's a combination of online self-paced and live training. I love that. And I have done many different type of messaging things with you over the years. I think the last, the most recent was you rewrote my bio and I have so much experience with Angela and her brilliance. I just speak so highly of you and I just highly recommend this. I haven't been through word myself, but I do highly recommend it because I recently saw some work that you did with someone else and what you put together with them and how incredibly clear and how that person can now take all of that messaging and go into their business just so easily in, in terms of getting the marketing. And I just, it's incredible. So I mm -hmm. will stop talking about it, but it's amazing. <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I really appreciate it. <laughs> And I actually get to be a bonus training for Word where I'm going to share about videos and what I know about, you know, social media platforms and different things. So I'm excited about that too. So yay. All right. So final question. What is the most common messaging challenge for healing practitioners? Uh, they, they think they are their modality or modalities. So, and people, I used to run a networking group for women entrepreneurs. I ran it for four and a half years in Utah. So I saw this up close and personal. Of, oh, I'm a Reiki practitioner. And half the room is, I don't know what Reiki is. And I don't know why I would want that. Or I'm an acupuncturist or a massage therapist or an angel guide or boy, so whatever that is. And so it's wonderful that you have a modality, but when we can flip that around and I help X do X, who do you really love to help? And what is the number one thing that you help them transform? And for example, I worked with an acupuncturist and her niche was helping women with um, infertility. And once she started narrowing on that niche, then it's like, oh, I know exactly who to refer to you. And then she had a couple of others, but that really became the leading, you know, leading message. I'm a massage therapist and I help, uh, you know, people who are training for their next marathon or like whatever that thing is. Now, I'm not a big fan of having a super, super narrow niche because again, boredom, remember that's, I'm always going to like, you mean I have to do that forever? <laughs> like, I don't want to do just that one thing forever, but it will help you start really looking at who do you really love to work with? And what is the benefit of working with you? What is that transformation that you see? So start talking about the transformation rather than the modality. And that will help people really lean in and go, oh, I know who to refer to you or I'm that person who's ready to work with you. Yeah, it makes so much sense because how many times can we basically, we hear somebody say is a Reiki practitioner, but maybe we we have somebody in our life that does Reiki. And so we're like, oh, then I don't need to see them. But maybe they help stressed out business owners and yeah. get their get their energy aligned. Well, that's, I don't care how you do it. I'm signing up. Yeah. Like it's, yeah. it's such a brilliant way to, to really have the healing practitioners be them, really be them in the world, in, in their business. And then like you say, connect with the people who it's going to, they're going to be able to create a difference, but also for themselves to, to really feel like they've their purpose or whatever the wording might be, because the people that they can contribute to are the ones showing up. I love yeah. that. I want to give one other example, because I see this also like with realtors, like, oh, I'm a real estate agent. Well, I know 20 of them that I could call if I ever want to sell my home, but what's the specialty? And I worked with some folks of, you know, I help people buy and sell their first home. Or help vets really. And in, in the US, there's you know different VA loans and different support systems. I, I help them navigate that so they get the best rate with the least money down. Things like that. It's like, oh, well, that's very different than you're one of 30 people that I know who is a real estate agent. Yep. And so having some of that language will really help hone in and it makes you more memorable. Yeah. 
rather than just one more person who does that same thing that you could probably count on one hand, at least of other people who do that. Wow. I love that. I love that. Yes. <laughs> Anything else to share with the listeners before we finish up today? You just keep sharing your message because you never know when people are going to hear it and it may very well surprise you when somebody is like, oh, that thing you said that one time. And you're like, I said, what? I don't remember that <laughs> changed my life or it helped me see something different or what, whatever it was. And so just keep, keep sharing your message. Wow. Wow. Thank you. Thank you so much for taking time out today and sharing all of your brilliance. Well, some of your brilliance, not all of your brilliance, <laughs> some of your brilliance today. And again, guys go check out word or get on uh, Angela's email list or connect with her in whatever way we've got all the links above below in this uh, show notes and yeah, I look forward to chatting with everybody soon. Bye, everyone. Thank you so much, Glenys. You're welcome. Bye.